Welcome back everyone, it's your boy, Medivac Guy, and this time, a little bit of a different flavor. I'm pretty sure this one comes from Alt, but I'm not 100% certain. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So first, let me describe how I've spent the past three summers. Live in Ohio, be camp counselor at Inwoods Camp in Hawking Hills region of Southern Ohio. Clear Creek Valley is one of the most biodiverse areas in the entire world. Not kidding, more than some rainforests. Nearest civilization is the town of Rockbridge. Tiny. Many miles away. Everyone lives in cabins with no air conditioning, power, or lights. I'm assigned to the older boys because I'm better with the bushcraft. Teach them batoning, fire building, debris huts, edible plants, the works. One night every week, we camp out use the skills and sleep under the stars. Every week, each cabin has to do a quote-unquote camp improvement project. Chores. Little kids pull weeds on what few unpaved, barely maintained paths that we have. Big kids, ages 14 to 17, use saws, rakes, and shovels to clear out new campsites or refurbish old ones. There's always been a rivalry between the older boys and girls, especially amongst the counselors. That's the camp. It's a nice place. I'm there for six weeks every summer, but the kids only stay for one week sessions. After three years of romping through the forests there, I know the place like the back of my hand. There's still some places I haven't been, but they are few and far between. As a side note, every counselor has a quote-unquote camp name, so campers can't find us on Facebook and stuff. I'm Hawkeye. My friends in the story are Turkey, a certified EMT, and my co-counselor. Magenta, old friend and an engineering student, and Khaleesi, a business student. Magenta and Khaleesi are counselors for the older girls. Turkey and I are counselors for the older boys. Be last week of camp. Everyone happy to be going home. What quote-unquote camp improvement projects don't get done have to be done by counselors after camp is done, but before they can leave. Fuck that. Turkey, Magenta, Khaleesi, and I all agree to have our kids do the hard chores so we don't have to do them alone. We clean up a campsite on the side of a hill called Black Feather. The girls clean up a site called Human Nature. They're all bragging because it hasn't been used in around 20 years. Camp is like 90 plus years old, and we finally get it up and going again. I'm a bit jealous because I've never been to that site. The only clue as to where it is is a dotted line on a 30-year-old hand-drawn map, indicating a shitty trail. Magenta says she knows where it is. I think she's bluffing, but she's a smart girl. I figure if anyone could find it, it'd be her. Next day. Head to Black Feather. Find a box tortoise and explain tortoise versus turtle. A tree has fallen right in the campsite. Go, go, gadget, saw! Fifteen teenage boys attack the fallen tree, roughly one foot diameter, with hacksaws. That bitch didn't know what hit it. Show them how to split wood. Black Feather will have firewood for many years. Return to camp. Now it's time to select overnight spots. Magenta has a smug grin on her face, looks at me in the eye and says, We're going to human nature. What do you think about that? Uh, never been there. Where is it? It's in the valley, a new part of the forest. We found where the ring was, but all the rocks were strewn about. That's weird. Nah. Walks away. Turkey comes up to me and says that he let a younger cabin take Black Feather, as it's not too far a hike for them. Where are we staying? Tatanka. I was very excited because there's a very cool clearing right by Tatanka. Perfect for astronomy. It's right on top of the hill. So it's a rough hike, but it makes the food taste so much better. Next day. Overnight day! Fifteen boys and two counselors. We made hamburgers on a grate that we carried up. Seven pounds of meat to divide. We ate like kings. Campfire jacks for dessert. Basically tinfoil wrapped tortilla with chocolate and marshmallow inside. Uh oh, person who packed the food gave us no tortillas. I'm fine with going without, but some of the guys were really looking forward to them. Don't worry guys, I'll just pop over to another campsite and see if they have extras. Quietly to Turkey. Where are the other campsites? I've heard the girls from downhill all evening, but I don't know where they are. I don't know, man. It's his first year counseling. But Magenta said human nature was in the valley. Did you see that raggedy ass trail leading downhill whenever we were headed up? Like 20 meters past the last cabin? I did see it, but it didn't look like it had been used recently. You sure that's right? 
Yeah, man, that's where the trail is on the map. It's around the right area, but the map even has written on it not to scale. Some sites may be overgrown. Alright, man. That's about right. I go down towards the trail. Roughly 9.30pm, so it's dark. I've got my whistle, my Mora companion, blade bathed in white ash, so it works on demons, and a headlamp. <sighs> white ash only works against skinnies, you idiot. Get to trailhead. It's a bit dark, but not so much that it's oppressive. I head into the trail. About five meters in, it suddenly turns from undergrowth to grass underfoot. This is odd. All the undergrowth is getting thinner too, but the path is still very defined for something 20 years old. Suddenly, no undergrowth, just trees. Eerie almost brightness. Don't even need my headlamp. It's a new moon, so this is fucking weird. The section of forest I'm in looks very new. Thin trees, low ground cover, no brushes or mid-level plants. The feeling I get in it though, it feels old. Like walking inside an old tomb. I keep walking more to distract myself from how weird this section of forest is. I realize that I don't hear the girls anymore. They're normally very loud being teenage girls. I stop. Everything in the world stops around me. Not even insects are chirping. I see fog slowly filling into the valley. It's now bright in there despite being a new moon. This place is not good. I'm actually getting goosebumps describing it. A stream runs down the center of the valley. Shallow, but still a stream. I don't know why, because every fiber of my being said otherwise. But I continued on the path, crossing the stream. Once I crossed, a wave of the most powerful feeling hit me. One I can't articulate to people. The best way that I can describe it is like feeling with every ounce of your body that something is the most despicable evil that has ever existed. This place was bigger than me. Bigger than the forest. I should not be here. I was more scared than anything. Since I knew there was nothing to fight, I ran further down the path. I don't know why the fuck I did it! Every step carried me further into it. But I could not stop. It felt like I had ran a mile or two, but it was probably no more than a few hundred meters. I'm not afraid of admitting I was almost in tears at this point. It's so much easier when there's something to focus your fear on, but when there's nothing, it just takes over. Suddenly, off the side of an increasingly dispersing path, glow of campfire, sounds of girls talking in low voices, stumble towards campsite. Magenta's voice, much shakier than normal, Hello? Who's there? I try to be as calm as possible to avoid spooking the campers, although I realize they are already unsettled as it is. Uh, h hey Magenta, it's Hawkeye. I'm, I'm coming out of the bush. Oh, good. Uh, what do you need? I had totally forgotten what I was there for. Just, uh, popping by. Cool, she says and then gestures me to come over to her, away from the campers. Hawkeye, what the fuck are you doing? Was that you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? Uh, I was getting something. Wait, was what me? What do you mean, where did I come from? You took the path, right? She looked at me in the eye, and for a second, I see the same look that must have been on my face minutes earlier, when I realized what I was feeling. She shook her head slightly, and I could see the color drain from my face. This was a bad idea, Hawkeye. What are you going to do? She told me how she felt much safer at the campsite, with the fire going. She certainly wasn't going to lead them out of the forest in the dark. Khaleesi was also new and didn't know how to get anywhere, so it was up to Magenta. She said she'd stay up all night and tend the fire, keep the flames hot and large. I looked her in the eye and asked her if she'd be okay. She said yes, but didn't sound convinced. I remembered why I was there and grabbed some extra tortillas, because damn it, I'm not going home empty-handed. Magenta shows me the path they took, old but completely different from my ingress route. I make it back on the other path. I feel it as I leave the campsite, but it fades as I walk away. Make it to a big, well-maintained path. Holy crap, this is the same one the other path led out on. Walk back towards camp, past where it should have been. What? 
It's not there. It's like the path closed up. Some of the thickest forest I've ever encountered where that damn path should have been. I know that's where it was because there was a large boulder opposite of it. Anyway, make it back to Tatanko, where my boys have been waiting for me. Turkey yells to me as I walk up. Hey Hawkeye, where have you been? Did you walk all the way back to the kitchen? <laughs> I realize it's like an hour and a half later. Uh, yeah, the girls didn't have any. Come up, let the older boys take over teaching the younger ones how to make campfire jacks. Pull Turkey aside. The girls had tortillas. What? Don't ever go to human nature. There's something else in that forest. What do you mean? I have him look at me in the eye. He sees that I'm not joking. Turkey, it's not a good area of the forest. Never go there. Okay, man, I, I won't. We go to bed, but I can't sleep in my hammock. I keep having dreams of the forest. The next day. Wake up. Have campers rekindle the fire since it burned down. Pancakes on the griddle we hauled up. Clean the site. Pack. Head back to camp. Get equipment put away. Send campers with turkey to get some showers and stuff. Magenta pulls me outside the dining hall, but away from the campers. She has bags under her eyes, obviously from lack of sleep. Hawkeye, did you sleep last night? Uh, not well. I kept having dreams. About the forest? Y yeah. Hawkeye, if I tell you something, will you promise you'll believe me? You felt it. You know what it was like. Sure, Magenta. Go ahead. Every girl either talked in their sleep last night, or woke up crying at some point in the night. We didn't eat breakfast. We just got out of there. Every girl? Every damn girl. I swear to you. I heard them. I didn't sleep a second. I was tending the fire. I don't know what would have happened if I would have gone out. Okay, Magenta. It's okay. I believe you. That's about it. Go home four days later. I don't know what the hell it was, but that's it. Sorry for the long post time. I'll compile it into one big image and post it next time. Dude, I know that feeling. Went through it in an old brickworks near my house. Rumor has it some kid got stabbed in the tunnels, and as soon as you step into it, you have that feeling of instant dread. You feel like your body's being gently squeezed by fear. Oh. On the master map, which is painted, contour lines and everything, on the wooden board, which all the other maps are based upon, there's a single red smudge between the path to human nature and the last cabin, right where the path would be. I shit you not. I think someone had a double meaning when they named the campsite Human Nature. Whenever I think of human nature as a concept, I think of conflict, war, hatred, and violence. The first person to found the campsite gets to name it, but nobody I've asked knows who founded human nature. It's just always been there. I'll never go back. Camp is a wonderful place that has a very special meaning to me, but human nature is something else entirely. Exactly. Trying to articulate it to somebody who hasn't felt it is impossible. You have to feel the fear inherent to the place. It's everywhere. I can't ever go back. Magenta won't even talk about it. She yells at me whenever I bring it up. We've been close friends for years, but she won't talk about this. Well, that wraps up this story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope I'm still improving. Hopefully I was a little bit more animated today than uh, in a couple of my other recordings. And as always, Ave Nex Alea!